In the United States, President Joe Biden is raising eyebrows and sending the White House into crisis mode. As a U.S. Senator and Vice President, the Commander-in-Chief's pension for outlandish stories is legendary. Now he claims his uncle was eaten by cannibals in Papua New Guinea during World War II. The latest remark not just raised eyebrows at home and in the Pacific Island nation, but also forced the White House to swing into damage control mode, fact-checking his statement. Our next report explains. It's election season in the United States. The race is tightening between Donald Trump, who's fighting a criminal case, and Joe Biden, who's seeking another term in the White House. And as presidential campaigning takes full swing, Biden's propensity for exaggeration has become more evident than ever before. In a recent visit to a war memorial in Pennsylvania, Biden was speaking about his uncle, 2nd Lieutenant Ambrose J. Finnegan, Jr. During his speech, the U.S. president made a surprising suggestion. He said that his uncle might have been eaten by cannibals in Papua New Guinea during World War II. While speaking to reporters, Biden described how his uncle Bosi had flown military flights over New Guinea during the war. The U.S. president went on to say that his uncle got shot down in New Guinea. However, he was never found because, he said, there used to be a lot of cannibals in the region. And my uncle, they called him Ambrose Bosi, they called him Bosi. My uncle Bosi was a hell of an athlete, they tell me, when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Now, Biden's comments have not gone down well with the people in the Pacific nation. His remarks have been met with bemusement and criticism. Local experts denied Biden's claims as unsubstantiated and poorly judged. An analyst said that the comments were offensive and painted the country in bad light. They also point out that it could further hurt America's efforts in strengthening ties with Papua New Guinea. Now, people in the country are not upset with Biden for implying that cannibalism was practiced in the region, but rather due to his characterization of the practice. Researchers have documented cannibalism practices in parts of the region. But Biden's remarks have still raised eyebrows. That's because they say the American leader's comments lacked context. Denouncing his comment, an expert said they wouldn't just eat any white man that fell from the sky. Not just experts, but even official war records don't align with Biden's claims. Records show Finnegan was killed after his plane crashed into the Pacific Ocean. It neither mentions that the aircraft was shot down, nor does it have any trace suggesting cannibalism. Joe Biden's latest comment forced the White House to jump into damage control mode. Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre acknowledged that Finnegan actually did die in a plane crash. However, she stopped short of addressing Biden's cannibalism claim. Instead, she defended the president, saying his comments merely signified how incredibly proud Biden was of his uncle. Biden's fascination for such egregious claims is not new. Time and again, Biden has repeated exaggerated stories of how his house burned down. That's after it was struck by lightning in 2004. In another instance, Biden claimed that he was arrested while trying to visit Nelson Mandela. But the question is, will his new tall tale have a political price? From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issue, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.